Yo, yo, Josh, yo. Just got back from the Caribbean. You know what this means? This is a state-of-the-art ball and chain. This one's especially cool. You spin it three times, it tells the wife exactly what you're doing and where you're at. <laughs> <laughs> Is it possible to get an extra full stop of light from any camera just by breaking the coveted 180 degree shutter rule? So how much is a full stop of light? Mathematically, it's the difference between shooting ISO 12,800 and 25,600, between shooting F4 or f2.8. Now, one stop of light, you may not think that this means much, but there are other low light filming techniques that when used together can give you some mind blowing results. Things you probably won't believe. This looks fake, but this is not. This was shot with a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera at midnight. Now, if you guys wanna see how exactly I did all that, I have a couple other videos that I will be releasing that will cover all of these other low light filming techniques that I used to get those shots. And yes, that footage was shot on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera 4K, among other things, breaking the 180 degree shutter rule. By now, this has been beaten into your head to never, ever, ever break this shutter angle. And if you're new to filmmaking and shooting video, then you should not break this rule. You should actually not even watch the rest of this episode. I don't wanna be responsible for you guys having terrible footage. But for the rest of you, you guys are in for a treat. It's tricky, but breaking it can be mastered and literally double your camera's low light ability. Back in the day, motion picture industry figured out that 24 frames per second was gonna be motion picture standard or something. They also figured out the exposure time for each of these 24 frames to give accurate, realistic motion blur. The actual term 180 degrees comes from the mechanical rotary disc shutter inside these motion picture cameras that were used back then and still today. These semi-circular discs would spin directly in front of the film gate and the size of the slots on the disc would determine the amount of time light would expose the film. A wider shutter angle would allow more light via more exposure time. The actual degree would be in relation to the size of the slot used, and that would denote the shutter angle. Thus, a semicircle 180 degree shutter was the most cinematic angle for motion blur, but it wasn't engineered for optimal low light. As technology gives cameras bigger photo diodes or new ways of increasing gain while internally denoising, and flange distance between camera and lens is becoming even smaller, we are entering a whole new world of low light filmmaking, and it's pretty exciting. If you don't believe me, watch David Attenborough's Life That Glows. They use every single trick that I know and more to get these outrageously low light shots that in real life your eyes can't even see. Now, there are films that have clearly broken this rule and it's part of the aesthetic, like the Academy Award winning film Saving Private Ryan. In this case, they did the exact opposite. They shot at a 90 degree and 45 degree shutter angle, AKA faster shutter speed, letting in less light, but giving the action a more staccato, immersive feel, indicative of propaganda war films. And on the opposite end, the less lauded film, Public Enemies, they shot at a 360 degree shutter. So this thing all the way open. And who knows why they did this? Probably to let in more light. And I think you can spot the trade off here. So if you think of a photo, longer exposure means more light and obviously more blur. Now, if we wanted to get away with this and retain full cinematic quality without anyone noticing, then our technique is pretty clear. The camera has to either be locked down on a tripod or it's gotta be very slow moving like on a gimbal. Our subject also has to be very slow moving as well. Now, what's dope about this camera is you can actually choose your shutter speed or shutter angle. It's really simple. You go to menu, setup, Shutter speed, shutter angles. What's dope about shutter angle is it actually does the math for you. You enter the shutter angle and it'll stay that shutter angle regardless of the frame rate. You guys ready to go? Hold on, just gotta tell the wife where we're going. So 
So for like regular cinematic B-roll signs, buildings, trees, lights, all that establishing shots of you can 100% get away with this. Like right now, I am breaking the rule. We are shooting one over 25. Can you tell? What if I move my lips really slowly? Can you tell? So the reason why I love this hack, why I think it's game changer, that you can do this on any of your cameras, on your cell phone, you can do it on a drone. Not that I would recommend you doing it on a drone, but while you're in the back of the cop car getting arrested for flying your drone at night, you would know that the exposure on it would be like one full stop brighter. It would make it worth it. I know this seems small, it's only one stop of light. When we add this up with some of the other techniques, that one stop of light becomes everything. What? What's it? Come home now. Ah. So even on my iPhone, using a third party app, I can actually control the shutter speed and it works as expected. Now, is it one stop of light really? Using my a7 III with an external monitor, this theoretical one stop of light is actually one real world stop of light. If we keep the aperture the exact same and we go from 1 50th to 1 25th, we have to cut the ISO in half to match the exposure from the two shots. And if we look up on the scopes, it's dead on. Now, before you guys start shooting everything with the slow shutter speed, there are two more trade-offs that you guys need to know about. If your warp stabilizing footage shot on a slower shutter speed, you'll notice slightly more blurring if you hit a big bump in that footage. Now this blurring does happen on normal footage from time to time, but I did notice it was a little more pronounced with several of these shots. And the warp stabilizer works as expected, but because now everything looks smooth, that blur is noticeable. If you use Optical Flow or Twixter to artificially give you slow-mo in post, then this is another tool that will be affected by more blur. And it makes sense. These types of tools use various tracking points that work better at higher shutter speeds. In fact, they recommend that you shoot at a higher shutter speed than normal if you know you're gonna be using one of these tools. And that's what we see here, more pronounced artifacts than normal. On a camera that operates with a shutter angle, it's pretty clear. We can't open the shutter further than 360 degrees. But on other cameras like my C300 Mark II, the answer isn't so obvious. They offer an optional slow shutter speed. If you're shooting 24 frames a second, it'll automatically put you at a shutter speed of 1 12th. So how can you tell the shutter to be open for 1 12th of a second and yet fit 24 of these in that same second. On mirrorless cameras, it's even more confusing. They'll let you go all the way down to one quarter of a second for a shutter speed. So what is actually happening when you go beyond 360? The frame rate is still 24 frames a second. We can see that in the metadata, but it only took four frames per second and reinterpolated it as 24 frames by repeating frames. There definitely is a limit to how you can do this trick because the appearance of drop frames. So I don't recommend you guys go beyond 360 degrees, except for tripod shots of non-moving objects. If there's anything moving at all, it'll be painfully obvious. This is a a great trick to use when you're in a pinch, but I always rely on aperture and ISO to get me there first. And then if I still need an extra bump of light and I don't have external lights, then this is a great way to get me out of a jam. And the cool thing is that you don't have to break it all the way to 360. Even top end cinematographers will take their shutter angle all the way down to 240 with impunity. But I do strongly recommend you guys practice this technique. It's not meant for every scenario, but it can help those scenarios that you need it. Anyway, this is Josh Joe saying thank you very much. Stay creative. Now go break the 180 degree shutter angle, whatever. Break it a little bit.